Hello, everyone. My name is Kristen Nemec, and I am the manager of Insight, Innovation, and Entrepreneurship, a new small business development initiative in the city of Racine. It's designed to enhance the creation and expansion of small business. And I am happy to introduce today's guest speaker. Jeff Kozer has more than 30 years' experience in consulting, executive sales management, business strategy, business development. In addition to his many speaking engagements, Jeff co-authored the award-winning book, Selling to Zebras, and in 1999, founded Selling to Zebras Incorporated, a sales enablement company offering unique, effective, and winning sales solutions to businesses. Using his expertise, Jeff teaches sales-focused individuals the necessary tools to overcome challenges of shrinking territory size, reduced resource availability, increased competition, and customer sophistication. Zebra Selling expands on the lessons and processes taught in the award-winning book, Selling to Zebras, which is one of 18 books included in the publication, The Sales Guru, Lessons from the Best Sales Books of All Time. Please join me this evening in welcoming Jeff Kozer. Thank you for inviting me. Is there anything controversial about zebras? I apologize to Governor Walker for the demonstrators out front. They follow me everywhere I go. <laughs> Anyone recognize this gentleman? He's, uh, he's fairly local for us as well. He ran one of GE's largest businesses here. And timing is everything. I don't know if you remember this, but when Jeffrey Immelt ran the healthcare division of GE, he was promoted to follow the legendary Jack Welsh just four days before September 11th. So he had a pretty big task, didn't he? And I don't know if many of you know this, but the term, the new normal, which is bantered around in business and healthcare, education, virtually every sector, economics. There seems to be a new normal ever since two and a half years ago we went through this economic slump. And now we're talking about economic recovery, which is exciting. That's the theme tonight, and it's the theme of my discussion as well. But the person that coined the term, the new normal, and I apologize, you wouldn't be able to see me if I stood behind this podium, so I'm gonna stand out front. <laughs> but Jeff is the one that coined the term, the new normal. It was shortly after the economy turned south in September of 2008. Jeff had his business leaders together over in Europe, and these are the leaders of the respective divisions of GE, and GE is about 180 billion, so these are pretty significant businesses. The healthcare division locally up in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, which is near my home, which is Heartland, by the way, is about a $17 billion division. So that division leader and the division leaders of his other businesses were presenting their business plans and they were talking about how the economy was gonna keep them from achieving their business plan. Jeff, after he heard the third executive stand up and say, there's challenges, we're not sure how we're gonna meet them, said, stop. This is the new normal. We've gotta figure out a way to sell in the new normal. But because timing is everything, Jeff experienced something I've experienced there's challenges, we're not sure how we're gonna meet them, said, stop. This is the new normal. We've gotta figure out a way to sell in the new normal. But because timing is everything, Jeff experienced something I've experienced and he got a little gray over the course of this period. <laughs> because his business leaders were saying, okay, how, what do we do in the new normal? And he said, well, part of it is attitude. We've got to change our attitude from we're not going to be able to accomplish our business objectives to there's a 90 locomotive order in Egypt. Let's go get it. These are some ideas on how you go get it. Anybody here ever sell something that is complex or does your business sell something that is complex, either a product or an idea or a service? takes a lot of coordination, a lot of the things we've been talking about here tonight, right? A lot of cooperation, a lot of experts, possibly from different companies, 
different sectors or within your own company. This is a process that can help sell in that environment. That's where it works best. But even if you're a B2C company, this first part of the process can help you a little bit there as well. Think about your sales process. Beginning with the very beginning, which is generating a lead. All the way through the interactions, with a pers all the way moving to a prospective customer. And finally, ending up with a profitable customer. Now as you think about that, choose the one aspect of your entire sales cycle that concerns you the most. As you think about that, what would that one be? What element concerns you the most? What would be at the top of your list? Got an idea in mind? Sales symptoms in the new normal. Sales cycles seem to be longer than they were before. Approval processes seem to be even longer, and sometimes deals can go weeks, months, or even years and end in non-decision. Anybody ever have that happen? It's painful. Do you find that deals are requiring higher levels of approval before they happen? I was doing a keynote address down in Chicago a little while ago, and one of the business leaders who was there with me runs a segment of, of Hewlett Packard, HP. And I asked him, he was, he was one of the speakers as well, and I asked him, now this was a pretty significant business also, like we were talking about with GE, the, HP has some pretty large divisions. And I asked him what his grants of authority were prior to the economy turning south. In other words, how much could he spend on his business without going for higher level approval? And he said he could spend $250,000. Once the economy turned south, I asked him, what did that change to? He said it changed to $10,000. That's pretty amazing. All other decisions went to the CFO of Hewlett Packard. And Hewlett Packard is about a $125 billion company. Can you imagine how many decisions are going to the CFO? That slows things down, doesn't it? So dealers require higher levels of approval. They're more random. They're unpredictable. Prospects require more assistance. And at the same time as they require more assistance, there's more complexity. But yet, they want more from us. But differentiation is still harder to establish. That makes it kind of interesting, doesn't it? Now you're probably sitting back and thinking, boy, they really hired a rah-rah guy here to talk about economic recovery, didn't they? But let's talk about how you can address some of these and how others have addressed some of these. And by addressing them, you can turn them into real dollars. Let's talk about somebody who's done it. Now these are just numbers to you, but they're really sound metrics to Pat Williams. Pat Williams has a 91% pipeline close rate on a quarterly basis. Now what that means is, when his business predicts something is going to close, 91% of the time it happens. Now using this, the tools and this process, his average sale price has gone up 74%, and it's happened 21% faster. The beginning of this process, he does something called zebra scoring his deals. And he knows from experience that if he has a 23 on a deal that they're working, that he'll close that deal 91% of the time that quarter. If you had those kind of metrics, could you improve your business? Probably a little bit, huh? Now he's a poster child. You know, when I sit back and I listen to presentations like this, I think, yeah, but that's, that's somebody that's really good at it. Could I do this? Could my people do this? So what's more relevant is the least that's ever been accomplished. So this is the range. If you do the full process for at least two years, now these are other poster, poster people. We'll talk about them in a second. But this is the least that's ever been accomplished and there's one more metric that I added in here, which is increasing your installed base business. If you do the whole process for at least two years, you'll increase your average deal size by 13%. You'll double your close rate. 
you reduce the length of your sales cycle. Notice that's the 21%, that was Pat's number. And 13%, you'll add, that's what you'll add to your existing customer business. That's the least that's been done. So that's how we predict the value that's possible with this process. These guys have all done it. We'll talk a little bit more specifically about them in a second. But this is another local guy, Jim Stolberg, works at HK Systems in New Berlin. Anybody know HK Systems? They were bought by Domatic. They're now part of a billion dollar company. They move materials, material handling. They do everything from automated conveyors to lights out warehousing, some pretty complex projects. Jim now travels the world for Domatic. He's actually head of their global supply chain today. 